I first off want to thank the Northern Clay Center for inviting me to be part of the um, American Pottery Festival for this year. Um, and, you know, I know I've told everybody that I've met so far that this is definitely like a, a bucket dream thing for me just as a clay person for as long as I've been doing it. Um, but yeah, and thank you to everybody who's here. Um, and so yeah, so as as uh, Amanda said, my, my name is Darcy Delgado. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And yeah, and so um, just to give you like a little bit of my background, like my like kind of like uh, clay background and experience. So I've been doing clay. So I've been working with clay for, you know, roughly about 20 years, um, but kind of more seriously for the last 18 years. Um, I've worked for different institutions, like both like managing studios, being a tech in studios. Um, I've worked at both, you know, community colleges and colleges as a tech, um, you know, both in the Bay Area and in the Los Angeles area. Um, I've also been affiliated with Idlewild Arts um, Summer Program, um, both as um, an instructor, as a technician, and as a studio manager. Um, so, you know, I've been all over the place uh, in, in that sense, I should say, not, not outside of California. Um, but also, you know, it's like over the years, um, you know, I've kind of struggled as an artist in terms of like being a sculptor, but like somebody who uses all kinds of materials and paints and draws and does all of that. Um, but then also juggling my love of functional pottery. And um, although I definitely came at it from a very, um, I don't know, like I, it's interesting because like, I feel like it's like a lot of the people that I know really got into ceramics or like functional pottery um from like the food aspect and and or from like the aspect of of kind of like um just how kind of fun and um you know relaxing like sitting at a pottery wheel can be and all of that and and I think honestly it's um it was a number of those kinds of things that sort of that sort of like first um I think almost made me odd, like it's gonna sound odd, but almost made me skeptical just because of the background that I did have. It's like, I didn't grow up with functional things. I didn't grow up even knowing that like functional pottery, you know, was actually like a thing and that people bought functional pots. You know, for me, it was like, you know, going to fast food or like, you know, just kind of very generic, you know, um, plastic wear and stuff like that. And, and so for me though, I've I've always been, it's interesting because I mean, I'm somebody who believes that everybody is an artist, um, whether you recognize it or not. But for me personally, it's like, I've always been somebody who, you know, from my earliest memories, it's like, I'm like drawing on things and painting on things and, and drawing on the walls and kind of just like, you know, it's like, I'm not somebody who ever necessarily needed somebody to be like, this is what art is, and this is how you do it. And this is, I mean, for me, it was more just like, kind of needing people to like, slow me down in a sense to like, learn techniques and things. But, you know, even within those settings, that's like the first class that I, first art class I ever took, I was kicked out of and told I would never be an artist. And I was six. So I was like, I was very young and my mom worked really hard to get my sister and I into this drawing class uh, to afford this drawing class and you know so for me though it's it's interesting because like it, you know over the years it was like I was it was kind of like just kind of like absorbing like all of those things while at the same time kind of like surviving by falling back into my imagination and so I'm somebody that even as an adult you know it's like I'm gonna be 38 this month and I I think of clay and pottery now, it, it's the thing that saved my life. And I mean that in like a lot of ways. I mean that, you know, both for like what is described in my, in my artist statement, you know, because um, all of that stuff's in there, even though like I would say that, you know, like, as I say, it's like, it's all, it's necessarily abstract, you know, because it's like, for instance, like I can pick up any particular pieces and I can also think about like, oh, well, 
you know, these kinds of marks came from like this very negative thing. It's like, but then like trying to take that and be like, okay, but like, you know, just like a lot of things in memory, it's like, yes, that won't ever like go away, but how can we remix it? Like, how can we take that thing and own it? Like, I'm a big, I'm a big believer that if you're somebody who like me has CPTSD or complex PTSD, um, and also has, you know, like out of necessity, it's like, um, I also learned how to deal as a child with like self-harm. And so I, I have a long history with that stuff. And so for me, it's like, those are aspects of my life that I've always been ashamed of. And that like, I was always afraid to own and that in like a professional setting, it was always encouraged. I was always encouraged to not be who I am and not have my life experience. And, um, and that also goes with being a transgender person um, of just kind of like trying to figure out how to survive by taking on um, an acceptable persona. And so for me, it's like over time, it's it's been, you know, so that's one way where like over time, like for instance, when I was living as a man, it was figuring out and through art being able to figure out like how can I love myself? Like how can I own my own life, my own experiences, like even the most negative ones that can be scary. Like I used to, when I was a teenager, I used to cut into myself or I used to burn myself or I used to, but it were like, to me, they were like exercises in trying to escape, you know, because it's like kind of like with meditation, like if you can focus on any particular thing so much, you can kind of melt away from your, your material reality. And so for me, when I found clay, or I should say when I re re-entered clay, because I did clay in high school. Um, and then I, long story short, I got kicked out and dropped out of high school and then came back and finished at a continuation school, but realized I just, I, I couldn't go down that road. And so when I started at community college, I, I took a clay class to literally just have something to help me make it through school since I had never learned how to be good in school and that first semester my professor asked me at the end of it she asked me to be in a show um at the at uh, Amoka so the American Museum of Ceramic Art which is in Pomona which is like down the highway from where I was going to school at the time um, because at that time they had these these class or not classes they a couple times a year they had these shows that were called kilnopening.edu and so it was all about um, southern california junior college professors and their students and so that was like the first place where i was like first off somebody looked at me and they were just like you have something like there's something here right and that it was somebody who was encouraging and not telling me it wasn't like my entire family who you know I'm just a black sheep or like you know or like the teacher that kicked me out at you know at six and told me I'd never be an artist you know um it was kind of like wow and then it, it was like that was the first time where it dawned on me I'm like this person is very respected she has shows she shows work she's a professional artist. It's like, she went to college. She is teaching at a college, you know? And then she also had all of these, she talked about like some of the other things that she did and like, in terms of like art writing and like all of this other kind of stuff. And so that was like the first time where I was just like, wow, like I was just doing this thing as a survival tool. And I was doing this thing that, you know, really, I mean, essentially, you know, it's kind of like I I put all of the energy that like I used to put into like running away from anything. So whether it was like self-harm, like physical self-harm or like I was a drug addict as a teenager, you know, like I mentioned, I got kicked out of school. Like I just had more consequential things in my life going on at the time than in school. Um, and so for me, it was like finding clay in that particular moment was like literally saved my life because I think about like, you know, it's like, I literally would be like a lot of the people that, you know, were my friends. It's like who either disappeared, went to jail. Um, it was a different path. Right. And we came from a different place and, you know, we're, 
you know, a lot of people didn't have the fortune that I did to be able to find my way. And so for me, it's like, you know, now it's like when I look back, you know, I didn't realize how much clay actually saved my life, you know, gave me a life, you know, set, set down a path that I could actually really love me and not just love the person that society is trying to force me to be, you know, not trying to be the man that like everybody around me, including like the Mexican community that, you know, I grew up around, you know, who, you know, it's like, like a lot of the world, it's, you know, if you're, if you're gender variant, it's not a safe place to be. Um, And so for me, it's clay did that for me, but it continues to like, I mean, I think about it today, you know, because unfortunately, as like a lot of people can can imagine and can, and can attest to you know it's like PTSD is is a lifelong thing and a lot of those a lot of those foundational things can be like lifelong struggles but to me it's like being able to like accept that is because of clay you know but also being able to like tell my story so you know so to kind of get to some of the work that I've been making and that you'll be able to see so I have this um I have this picture and I titled it Para Mi Gente. And so for me, it's like, I think, you know, I'm able to like go back now and think about all of, I guess, like the things that I wasn't able to recognize when I was younger that I really value. Um, you know, like for instance, um, like my grandmother, you know, my, um, my abuelita, you know, it's like, she is somebody that however you feel, you know, about, religion or anything it's like she's somebody that instilled a particular love of um the Virgin of Guadalupe and like other kinds of figures and which again it's like I used to not I never felt like those things could be for me or at least it took me a long time to but through clay I've realized that it's also for me you know that no matter how you feel about anything in particular and so I feel like especially now where I'm at and with like this particular body of work, it's like, I feel like more than ever, I can just fully be me and I can explore, you know, in, in one piece, you know, because I'm allowing myself that ability to, to um, let my pots be as complex as, as just kind of people are you know it's like you know so for me it's like I can look at something and even though it doesn't matter if anybody else understands it it's like I can look at both the difficult things and the beautiful things that I'm thinking about it's like I could think about all of the great days and also all of the bad days that gave me lessons that brought me to where I am now and that I'm thankful for now you know and so for me it's it's interesting because I guess it's helped me all of all of this work has also just like helped me I feel like find my voice just as a caring individual in the world and you know and so it's like the longer I get into this and the more easy it is for me to see that these functional pots that I'm interested in making even if I don't understand it from like the most functional or food perspective that some people came from I see them as I see them as giving the ability to do service in the world. Like I see them like two of two of the, you know, people in my life who have been the most influential, actually three of the people that have been the most influential in my life. Um, you know, now that I'm able to recognize it at this point in my life, um, which again, it's like, they're, you know, it's like two of them. It's like, I, I, I've always been a little bit nervous to talk about just because I usually get some really weird comments are, but like my, two of my aunts who are uh, Salesian nuns, you know, and regardless of like how anybody feels about, about Catholicism, you know, they're two people that have been the most respectable in my life and have been the best, no matter where you're from, what your identity is, you know, they're people like, you know, unfortunately, one of them didn't get to see, meet me as Darcy, but, but my aunt who is still around, it's like, she never batted an eye. She never like questioned me. She never anything. And so for me, it's, it's a weird thing to be able to like, be like, well, it's like, I'm definitely not that, but I can take that, 
that devotion to service and I can take that devotion to trying to make a better impact for, you know, other, you know, marginalized people. And, and even like, and, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to like be divisive in any particular way and say that this is just for people who are exactly like me. It's like, to me, I'm like, I feel like all of the details that you see and everything, all the layers that you see everything, it's like all of those layers, it's like they do serve certainly cathartically for myself, but more than anything, it's like I want whoever they're supposed to go to, to be able to like pick something up. And if they've ever felt even like an iota of what I felt in my life, they they have the ability, hopefully, this is my, my I guess my largest dream for for any of my work is that hopefully somebody will pick it up and know that I did this for them and that. So like, no matter what, no matter how alone somebody might feel because of how their work is treating them because of an experience they had with the police or with their parents, with their grandparents, that as marginalized or as just lonely as you feel in the world, that there are people out there who are rooting for you, even if they don't know you, that they're, you know, that they're trying to share their experiences and their hardship and their love, you know, just like I'm, I'm a big believer in, in, in a very particular kind of spirituality. And, and I believe in energy and I believe in like all of that kind of stuff. And so for me, it's like, regardless of what is happening in my pieces, like at the very core, I just want to imbue kind of the purest love that I can into everything. But yes, I think I think that's kind of what I got. <laughs> questions? Does anybody have questions? I also make a lot of funny voices, so <laughs> I thought the internet went went for a minute. <laughs> oh no. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a unicorn. I only have one. My little unicorn horn. Yay. <laughs> Audience, now is your chance if you want to unmute and ask Darcy any questions, probe any further, or type something in the chat. You can ask questions about my little duck friend, my little gummy bear friends. Can you give us some more close-ups of, of some of the details on those pods? Oh, yes. Yes. And so I don't know if you can see, but like, so I've got this pot that it's a vase, right? But I've got my little, it's got like this duck head and it's got this little um, Nike swoosh duck butt. But also, so I don't know if you can see the eyes here. So this particular piece, um, so I've started doing these things with like these little like animal pieces, but so this particular piece is, um, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm blanking on my own name. Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, just Act Natural. So it's like, you know, not just as a trans person, but just people in the world, you know, you're like walking through, you got a new haircut or, you know, you just like are trying out some new pronouns, you know, or like, you know, getting your groove on and just remember, just act natural, <laughs> act natural. I also have this, so this interesting um, espresso cup. And so this particular one, so talking about memory, I was, I was telling somebody here, about how um so this one is called angeline and so if you by any chance if anybody was in the um, hollywood area of los angeles in like the late 80s early 90s you might have seen um like these crazy billboards with this blonde bombshell where it said like angeline like in really hot pink like lettering and so I, when I was a little kid, my dad used to collect guitars and we'd go to Hollywood at, at that time. So lots of big hair metal hair and like, you know, tattoos and all of that kind of stuff. But like, so for me, I'm just like, but I've always like had that image of like that billboard and like Angeline, you know? So I'm like, ah, yes. An ode to Angeline with gummy bears. I also love gummy bears. <laughs> and Darcy, will you tell us a little bit more? I know you fire everything multiple times can you tell yeah. us a bit about like the technical part of your yeah mind? 
absolutely um and so so I would say the majority, like 99% of the work that I have here at the, at the APF. So I've it's, so I use porcelain and so I do, so kind of like an odd temperature. So it's like, I fire it to cone eight in oxidation. Um, and depending, depending on the availability, uh, where I, where I make my work, um, I either do it in gas or electric, although definitely not the greatest for your elements in electric. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, so I do that. Um, and the glaze that I use actually has like a pretty crazy range. And so like, I can use it anywhere from like cone five to 11. Um, and the crazy thing is even from five to 11, it's even, it's pretty much just as runny at cone five as it is at cone 11, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so I, I fire to eight, you know, and then I fire to cone five. And so that's like, you know, when you, when you see stuff in person, it's like, you'll see how like, there will be like layers of things underneath the glaze, but then you'll also see layers on top of the glaze. And it's really just like getting the kiln hot enough for everything to fall in, but without running. Right. Um, but yeah. And then, but it's like, yeah but like even before that it's kind of like okay well it's like how many colors of clay does each piece have like how many i mean like even like this little piece has three different colors of porcelain that it's made out of um and then of course you know it's so then it's like it's i do a lot of layers beforehand and then i glaze it and then i fire it to conate and then i put more layers and including sometimes like really like kind of like doing some some big alterations um but yeah and then although I didn't bring any of these pieces in there are several pieces that I do have that are slightly different where they were actually fired to cone 10 and then fired to cone six with some layers and then fired to cone 05 for the glaze so <laughs> So a lot of, I, I've definitely, um, I think that's the aspect of like coming from like also a very like sculptural background kind of like enters like into what I do and into like that kind of like, uh, yeah, kind of dreamy layer, dream, dreamy layering and stuff like that. Kind of like when it's, it's not done until it's done. For sure. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate, especially all of your vulnerability. I think it's um, a really brave thing to share that much of yourself with a group and um, we deeply appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah.